All right, good afternoon or whatever. Good evening, everybody. Uh, and it's a pleasure today to have uh, Zi Hong Lin, who I think needs no introduction, but he'll get one anyway. So I notice we have a few visitors from Princeton. So I should mention that uh, Zi Hong started out in Princeton, uh, where he did his PhD and worked for a while and later moved to Irvine, where he's now professor of physics, and he's well known for many contributions, such as the GTC code, and the important studies of zonal flows, and creation of notable color view graphs for SIDAC, just to name a few uh, notable achievements. And he, from there, he moved to largely to energetic particles, and he's had a useful collaboration with the D3D group. And today, and today we're going to hear about a new twist, so to speak, in his interests, namely gyrokinetic simulations of 3D toroidal plasmas, which means stellarators in not so many words. So please go ahead. Thank you, Pat. Um, so I'm going to uh, provide you uh, lots of uh, color view graph. Hopefully uh, not uh, too many equations, uh, perhaps the last slide. So this is uh, work done mostly by my colleague, uh, Dr. Javier Nicolau and other several postdocs uh, and researchers at UCI and two graduate students at uh, Peking University and the students uh, from India. Um, as students and several researchers uh, as collaborator in this project. So uh, I guess most of uh, MD here are more familiar with Tokamak, where we usually not that uh, concerned uh, with the neoclassical transport. However, in the uh, sterical, uh, because of the three-dimensional magnetic field, neoclassical transport will often uh, can be dominate uh, channel of uh, transport. So I'm going to uh, discuss both for uh, sterile mostly, and at the end, mention uh, uh, br uh, briefly the three-dimensional magnetic field in uh, tokamak with the IMP, uh, Russell Magnetic Perturbation. I will discuss the uh, Jarkenti simulations of the 3D uh, toroidal plasma, and an interesting new uh, mode we call uh, critically trap uh, electron mode at 10, uh, the zonal flow dynamics in the stereo, and how the uh, neoclassical effect would uh, affect the micro turbulence in uh, stereo and token map with 3D magnetic field. So the motivation uh, of this work is that uh, optimized uh, stereo such as W7X exhibit uh, an uh, anomalous transport that cannot be explained by neoclassical uh, transport. Indeed, uh, phase contract imaging PCI show characteristics of microturbulence uh, due to tube wave uh, instability. To study such uh, microturbulence in 3D toroidal uh, plasmas, we need uh, full flux surface and radially non local simulation because of the tube wave uh, eigenmode often localized to discrete magnetic field lines. The uh, Hitically trapped particle can drift far away across the flux surface. And neoclassical and turbulent transport um, often intrinsically couple uh, in the stereotypes. So we have initiated uh, GTC geochemical simulations of stereotypes for neoclassical and turbulent transport and uh, often eigen mode. Um, so, how do we represent the 3D toroidal geometry in uh, GTC? This was uh, started by uh, Dr. Igo Holo in collaborations with Dan Smong uh, for the simulations of the uh, D3D token map with IMP. Uh, we, use, we use our 3D uh, uh, equilibrium quantity from Vmax and transform it into Buzo coordinate. And then we cast those uh, 3D uh, quantity in a three-dimensional uh, spline function in an equilibrium mesh. And we can simulate either partial or a total uh, stereotypes using the stereotypes symmetric. For example, uh, this is the LSD geometry and W7X geometry. The color represent the strength of the magnetic field. LSD has 10 uh, sections that are identical 
uh, W7X has a five um, symmetrics. And so we can simulate one fifth of W7X or one tenth of the LSD for neoclassical sim uh, simulation. For turbulence, that means that you have five eigenmode in W7X and 10 eigenmode in LSD. And so you can simulate one or more uh, uh, triple eigenmode. In our earlier uh, simulations, the alpha eigenmode was uh, simulated. ITG uh, in the LSD and W7X uh, were also simulated. In all these uh, turbulence and neoclassical uh, simulations, we use an electrostatic model and electron um, use triple kinetic equation. First, we want to verify that uh, GTC simulations of accelerators agree with established uh, code simulating the triple in the accelerators. And uh, Utopi uh, is one of the most uh, prominent uh, code using a uh, uh, gel kinetic model to simulate the triple in W7X. So here we compare the uh, ITG um, frequency and growth rate among structures and uh, show a good agreement between GTC and Utopi uh, for the ITG with adiabatic electron. Those ITG uh, eigenmode are localized to discrete magnetic field lines, which uh, can be seen in this flux surface part of the potential in the poloidal angle and poloidal uh, angle simulating uh, one fifth of the w W7X. Such uh, discrete mole structures appear also as a discrete uh, structures on a poloidal. Uh, cross sections in these particular locations uh, we call a uh, bin shape of W7X. Um, in contrast, the LHD has much more um, similar mole structure than uh, with the token Mac and uh, this kind of typical Bernoulli mole structures and the uh, um, on the Fox surface, the more structure, um, but similar to also to token Mac. All right, uh, with these uh, verifications, we carry out the nonlinear simulations of ITG uh, and found that the ITG uh, in the W7X and LHD is saturated by a zonal flow, uh, comparing the simulations in W7X with the zonal flow and without zonal flow, you can see that the linear eigenmode structures um, is broken up by the zonal flow in a linear phase and the um, turbulent transport is reduced by a factor of uh, five to 10 ish. So the zonal flow dominate the saturations for ITG. Uh, the mole structure also uh, spread across radio uh, domain. Uh, another interesting physics is the uh, inverse cascade in the uh, toloidal end harmonics. And uh, that cascade can be enhanced uh, in the simulations with zonal flow. Uh, shown here is the uh, end spectrums. Uh, linearly, the most unsta unstable mode would be about 200 uh, n number. And uh, those linearly most unstable mode are uh, first saturated by zonal flow, uh, which would uh, generate a low end harmonics by linear uh, coupling that I would discuss later. Those low end harmonics can act as a quasi mode, and then the high end harmonics can, can scatter off those are low-end harmonics that uh, facilitate uh, the uh, inverse cascade. Uh, without the zonal flow, those uh, low-end cross-mode amplitude are much lower and the cascade process uh, would be uh, slow. Now those um, inverse cascades still happen because of nonlinear toloidal uh, couplings between different uh, high-end uh, harmonics. All right, so those simulations use adiabatic electron what would be the effect of kinetic electrons? So this is the um, simulations with the kinetic electron for ITG. Um, we found the transport enhanced by three to four, uh, two to three times for the W7X and the LSD when we include the kinetic electrons. So how this um, happened? Now we can understand this enhancement by uh, electron response the electron perturbed distribution functions is separate into the adiabatic and non-adiabatic components. And the simulations only solve the uh, non-adiabatic components as did by uh, WD. Um, in the simulations with adiabatic electrons, we assume that delta H E is more, so we drop that and electron uh, adiabatic response appear as dielectric constants in the ITG uh, eigenmode equations. 
However, for the trapped electron, the response um, is zero. That means delta H E is negative to this adiabatic response. And so uh, if you calculate delta H E uh, correctly, you would reduce the contributions to the dielectric constants of ITG and you reduce dielectric constants. So you enhance the uh, uh, growth rate of the ITG. So the trapped electron enhancement of ITG is really enhancing ITG by not responding to ITG. Now those simulations are quite expensive. Uh, we use a huge number of the equilibrium mesh to just represent the equilibrium magnetic field and geometry, uh, even for one fifth of W7X. And then turbulent mesh, you can imagine even more uh, demanding because total N number is like 200 uh, to 300 compared to D3D is uh, typically around 20. So we need to use several thousand colloidal grid points um, for a regular mesh, you would need to use the same number of colloidal grid points. Uh, in GTC, fortunately, we have the uh, global field line mesh, and so that reduced parallel grid points to nine uh, points, so that reduced several hundred um, times of the requirement for the uh, grid points. All right, so with all these expensive simulations, what we find um, beyond this ITG is interesting. That is my next topic uh, of the H10. Before that, I wonder if any questions, if you want to uh, raise questions, uh, you can do it now. Okay, um, if not, then I'm going to move on to the next topic. So what- um, a question? Uh, go ahead, please. You mentioned that the helically trapped electron mode requires non-local full surface simulation. Yes, that's uh, what I'm- Can you to... comment on, uh, okay, so maybe you'll get to it. My, my question is, what does that mean for Delta F attempts, um, like Delta F flux tube attempts to study turbulence and stellarators? All right, okay. So I'm going to now suggest your questions in this uh, topic here, uh, S10 uh, simulation. So let me uh, review the basic physics of trap electron mode in Togama and how different uh, the stereotype uh, trap electron mode can be and then hopefully answer your um, questions. So in talking about uh, trapped electron mount TEM is excited by toroidally trapped electron. And uh, if you imagine this is token Mac, you have a weaker magnetic field um, further away from the center of the token Mac. And then you have a stronger magnetic field uh, near the center. Right? So those weak magnetic field attract the uh, electrons and those uh, regions has a magnetic curvature pointed toward the magnetic axis that is the curvature directions is in the same directions as the pressure gradients. So that's the so-called bad curvature. And that's why the trap electron mode in Tokamak. Inspired by such uh, insight in Tokamak, uh, local flux field simulations uh, try to find such TEM mode in uh, stereotypes. And indeed, uh, they seems to be uh, some weak TEM mode, but mostly driven by the ion, not trap electron. And they are not uh, driving a large uh, transport However, we noticed that W7X has a lot more typically trapped electrons than toroidally trapped electrons. So toroidally trapped electron is due to the variations of magnetic field uh, around the toroidal directions. If we look at the W7X, the magnetic field variations around the toroidal directions is much stronger. So you go from high field to low field, right? This is like a mineral type um, magnetic field along the toroidal directions. So there are a lot more helical trap uh, electrons. And uh, looking for the uh, field lines that you would find uh, TEM mode in token map may not be able to find the more um, that excited by those are uh, helical trap electrons. So um, the natural um, strategy is to simulate the full flux surface and see what um, dominate the drive uh, for trap electron mode. An important difference uh, between TEM and ITG is that TEM can be excited by purely uh, density gradients. Uh, so we suppress the uh, temperature gradients in order to avoid the ITG and see if we can get instability. Uh, so Javier indeed found this interesting uh, instability uh, shown here, um, the most structures is in the um, inner side of the uh, toroidal geometry. So if you look at this is W7X and you look from the center of the machine outward, right? And uh, the helical trap electron uh, concentrate in these regions with weak magnetic field. 
this uh, cross section has happened to be this triangle shape. The ITG uh, was in this uh, regions that happened to be the bin shape. So we found this instability edge time that uh, concentrate in the in, inner part of the torus. Okay? And it's very uh, localized in a flux surface plot, this poloidal versus the poloidal, right? The few lines is like going like this. Uh, the theta equals zero is the um, outermost positions. Uh, pi and negative pi is innermost. So you can see that the mole um, peak near the innermost other than the outermost. And so if you look at from inside, this is the dominant uh, mole structures inside toward the uh, center of the uh, geometry. So that is uh, interesting. And you can see the contrast between ITG and TEM in W7X. Um, in order to see the ITG, now we look at uh, the mole from outside the machine and the ITG um, concentrate near these two locations. We saw those uh, bin shape before. And from looking from outside, you can see the ITG mode structures um, concentrate outside, and it has a long uh, parallel wavelength. On the other hand, the uh, h times has a shorter parallel wavelength because the helical trap electron uh, confined within this uh, weak magnetic field location, and you don't see much activity out outside because most of the, uh, the mode is inside. That we don't see it from outside. Okay, so now um, how this edge term is excited. We uh, look at the uh, magnetic field and the curvature uh, and see how they are more structural correlate with them. Now we look at um, from the center of the machine outward and uh, we simulate this one fifth uh, to simulate the first eigenmode in W7X. Um, on the two boundary, uh, you see this uh, strong magnetic field okay? and you see the uh, curvature in this uh, bin shape locations. In the inner part, the curvature pointed uh, away from the magnetic axis, so it's a good curvature. Away from the uh, center uh, of the machine, the curvature pointed uh, toward the magnetic axis, so it's back curvature and that's how you got the uh, ITG in uh, those regions. Interestingly, in the weak magnetic field locations, the inner side of the torus, the uh, magnetic field curvature actually pointed outward from the machine, that is uh, toward the magnetic axis. So you have a bad curvature inside and uh, good curvature outside. So that's uh, uh, the reason you get this uh, H10 localized in the inner side of the uh, torus. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another difference that uh, because trap electron um, for the helical trap particle, uh, it won't uh, propagate in the poloidal directions. In Tokamak, you're mostly in the poloidal uh, directions. Now, uh, under after understanding those linear properties, we now perform the nonlinear simulations, trying to find out how they, uh, the more saturated and how much transport it can drive. The first thing we observe is the uh, uh, turbulence spreadings from these linear eigenmode structures to these nonlinear mode structures, filling up uh, most of the uh, domain. Okay, I see uh, Pat um, has a hand here. Pat, go ahead, please. Yeah, well, I mean, I, just if you go back one before we do, to, could you clarify the instability mechanism? In other words, is, is it basically, uh, shall we say, an interchange of trapped particles or is it, uh, is it something requiring, you know, negative dissipation, like you, like in the tokamak case, a drift resonance or collisions or something? Now, for uh, this parameter, we use the uh, density gradients. We choose to be the same as temperature gradients for the ITG case, mm -hmm. and the uh, growth rate of the H term uh, seems to be uh, larger than the uh, frequency. So it's kind of a reactive type instability involve almost all the. Um, helical trap electron. So there's no uh, sharp resonance like the collision this uh, TEM mode in token map. So it's, it's like basically a reactive is a sort of an interchange type of thing for the trap particles. Exactly, except that it's uh, shorter wavelength than typical interchange mode. Right, right. Okay, and thanks. It's basically something that your colleague at MIT, uh, Bruno Kopi, <laughs> found more than half a century ago. Mm. You must, uh, I got lots of uh, input from him. 
<laughs> you mean the, his ubiquitous mode thing? Uh, uh, the uh, reactive uh, type, that's on more in like, yeah, in, yeah, in that's, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, sometimes he carry his uh, 60 years old paper and give it to me. So. All right, so this is the nonlinear uh, physics. Um, <clears throat> the uh, turbulence spreading is very significant across the polar directions and radio domain. Um, if we zoom in, this is huge uh, resolution. So we zoom in, you can see the most structures still radio elongated, um, even though it's not as um, regular uh, as linear eigenmode uh, structure. And um, again, the Polaroid harmonics here is on the order of 200-ish, uh, so it's a big number um, compared to token map. So this leads us to the saturation mechanism. Um, it looks like the zonal flow uh, does not dominate in S10, but they all kind of play a similar role uh, in the inverse uh, cascade in the n number uh, turbulence spreading and zonal flow. Now we can see that uh, the uh, poloidal n spectrum inverse cascade from linear, uh, most unstable n number about 250 to 300 uh, in the linear phase. Closer to nonlinear saturations, it generates the uh, low end uh, quasi uh, more harmonics, and then the uh, uh, n spectrum cascade downward, um, eventually nonlinear um, spectrum dominated by the uh, poloidal n number below uh, 150. And we already see the turbulence spreadings that can dissipate the uh, energy uh, from unstable locations uh, to uh, stable locations. The zonal flow also helps the saturations, but uh, it's not dominate mechanism. All right, so uh, one interesting uh, physics is this low end crossing mode that, that enhance the uh, inverse cascade and that can be generated by uh, linear coupling with zonal flow and uh, nonlinear uh, mode coupling. All right, um, so how about the transport? How large they can drive? <clears throat> so we use uh, this typical temperature gradients, A over LT, A is minor radius, uh, LT temperature gradient scale is 1.4 uh, for ITG. And that is the uh, based on the benchmark between CTC and Utopia and uh, also similar benchmark um, by other codes. Now we just um, use that gradients for density gradients and then um, Assume temp temperature uniform, and you can see that the uh, heat diffusivity, uh, the uh, heat conductivity of ITG is similar to the particle diffusivity of H10. So this can drive a large particle transport, okay. and just make sure that we are not getting numerical noise. Uh, the noise is about three order of magnitude smaller. Uh, when we uh, mix up the temperature and density gradients, we do see a lower transport levels, like the so-called stability valley. So uh, I think this is important uh, in terms of particle transport uh, because ITG most of the dry heat transport and you wonder what would cause the particle transport in a uh, machine like W7X. Uh, this of course would be important for the uh, tritium confinement and uh, the ash uh, removal in a, a burning plasma. All right, that would be my second topic. Any uh, questions about this? And did I answer the earlier questions about why we need full flux surface simulation for H10? Um, about the H10 argument, I think your, your plot comparing the curvature field strength um, and, and fluctuations shows why we need um, non-axisymmetric toroidal resolution, uh, which is clear. But how about the um, the limitations on radially local flux two methods? Can you comment on that? Okay, so uh, there. Uh, let me just re uh, recap what you, you mentioned here, right? Because the more localized to those few lines, so if I pick a few line to simulate. The H10 here, you won't find it. But if I pick a few line here, you will see a very strong instability. So depending on where you pick the few lines. And that's the reason that you need um, the uh, full flux surface. Now, of course, from the eigenmode point of view, the eigenmode couple all the total n number 
So you cannot just pick a few a fast cube that only select a few n number because all n number are coupled together. Now the second issue you mentioned about the radial uh, non-local. Now there are several physics here. One is obviously the uh, turbulent spreading, right? So if I just limit it to a small domain, uh, you won't have the additional energy dissipations when they spread from the unstable locations to stable location. Um, I also would uh, emphasize this non-local uh, uh, physics later on, on the zonal flow physics because the um, uh, helical trapped particles could drip uh, across the whole radial domain, and that's different from token map. Right, token map, you, you are, your your orbit are confined, and so as long as your domain size is larger than orbit width, you'll be fine. But in the uh, steratos, the helical trapped particle can you know can can drip uh, across the whole domain uh, all all the way to the world. So they um, need to be uh, uh, treated if you, um, you want to attack, uh, into account their effect, for example, on the zonal flow dynamics, I think is relevant. Mm -hmm. Thank you for right. the discussion. Welcome. Any other questions? Hi, I just have a simple comment. So uh, this is Ali. Uh, this is this, this is really interesting. This reminded me uh, about the, also the LHD result. So we, we have the uh, really ballooning mode, uh, ballooning type mode, which is uh, very, very similar with uh, uh, located at this helical uh, valley. Uh, the most structure is, yeah, look at, uh, yes, yes, in LHD, we, we basically, uh, at that time, we have the blue region, which basically located at the outer region in mm -hmm. the blue. And the, the most structure just look very localized in space. And only there, you can see those things. Okay. Uh, I don't know how uh, this connect together, uh, but probably I think that is uh, very much like uh, 3D nature. Yeah, I, I, I noticed you earlier appear on this. I think it would be, be interesting sometimes to use CTC to simulate those more. Yeah, th uh, this is all that's work about, about the balloon mode. Uh, that is a, a strictly localized uh, at the same TM region, which you simulate. It's only, but that case is only appeared at the uh, much higher density, very uh, high pressure gradient. I think probably that uh, in, when you increase the pressure gradient, it turns into the uh, ballooning structure, right. ballooning mode. Yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. You can look. I I, I can send you the paper. Uh, the published twenty seventeen. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm uh, aware of that paper. Yeah, thank you for the yeah. highlighting that. Okay, any other questions? May I ask a quick follow-up question? Go ahead, please. In, in the discussion of linear and nonlinear, this slide, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned, if I heard you correctly, that the nonlinear is radially it is saturated by non-radial contributions. But in your plot, the nonlinear appears to have a um, factor of many larger magnitude. So it is the Mm -hmm. Plot. Are you are you comparing the uh, amplitude uh, from linear to nonlinear? I guess just in your color plot on the slide. Yeah, this, this is artificial. One, so one is two e minus four rather than six e minus three. Right, right. Yeah, color bar difference. So we're going from linear to nonlinear, and the amplitude does increase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so I'm observing that the amplitude increases, but your words were that that the modes were such um saturated nonlinearly. That's okay. Consistent. Yeah, so nonlinear saturation requires some kind of energy um, sink, right? Uh, linearly, the mode would be localized to the uh, regions where the drive is strongest. And so you can imagine if the fluctuation is carried by the turbulent spreading to other radio locations where the um, mode is uh, damped, then you dissipate the energy, right? So and that can help saturation. So that's, that's a saturation uh, due to the energy flux in real space. Another uh, mechanism is this energy flux in the end space, right? When you have the linearly most uh, unstable end harmonics, uh, if the energy is carried down to the low end that uh, is linearly stable, now you are distracting the, the uh, uh, energy from the, the wave uh, and dissipate it in the damped uh, locations of the end spectrum. Uh, similarly, zonal flow, uh, you can take the energy away from the <clears throat> unstable uh, mode by scattering the um, eigenmode to the uh, high KR uh, damped mode. 
So all this would uh, represent energy sink to the linear instability and that help the uh, saturation. Now in ITT, okay. we found that zone four itself dominates the process, but now in HTM, it looks like all the three are playing a similar uh, uh, effect. That's a very interesting result. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I wonder what that may have to do with something uh, zone of flow I will discuss uh, next. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we all are known where uh, zone of flow dynamics in Tokamak uh, as very well described in the uh, review paper by Pat. Now there are some interesting new physics uh, in the stereotype. I already mentioned one uh, that is the uh, linear toroidal couplings between the flux surface average zone of flow and the uh, low end harmonics. Um, I would also highlight another um, interest in physics of particularly trapped particles, how they would affect zone of flow dynamics. Um, we also are working on the collision list damping um, by uh, UCI students working with heavy aid. Uh, there could be difference. Um, the uh, co collision of damping in Togma is mostly due to the friction between the um, trap and passing um, particle, but now in stereo you have the helical trap particle, the collision would first destroy those uh, helical trap particle. And then even without the collision, uh, in the collision this limit, uh, in Tokamak we have the uh, uh, Lawson Blue Hinton uh, residues and that lead to the so-called damage ship that can suppress the turbulence near the marginality. Uh, in stereo this uh, residue level would continually be damped uh, in the longer time scale, so that would weaken the uh, uh, damage ship effect. All right, uh, another difference is in Tokamak, the zonal flow uh, actually produce a flow mostly in toroidal directions um, because of the magnetic pumping to them, the toroidal rotations, but in uh, to, uh, stereo like the W7X, the uh, damping in toroidal direction is stronger than the toroidal directions. And then um, just interesting uh, analogy for another geometry, uh, the uh, field reverse configurations uh, opposite to the uh, Tokamak and the uh, uh, stereo there's no collision with damping of zonal flow. So we found that the zonal flow uh, can be generated by micro turbulence and then suppress the micro turbulence uh, and the dimming ship is very strong. And then the transport would be proportional to collisionalities. And this could lead to interesting physics that is confinement improved with the uh, higher temperature because of this dependence on collisionality. Um, that paper has just been accepted by uh, nuclear fusions and that by um, Dr. Cecil Wei. Okay, let's focus on the um, stereo two physics, the generations of low end harmonics by zonal flow. So this is a couplings uh, of the flux surface average potential with the uh, uh, finite toroidal n uh, number due to the uh, dependence of the magnetic field on the toroidal angle. And in the W7X that dominant harmonic is n equal phi. So we see that in this uh, collision, this uh, damping of zonal flow simulations after the fast um, uh, magnetic pumping effect, we see this uh, toroidal harmonic dominance uh, that is n equals zero, m equals one. Um, but we also see these two uh, helical harmonics, n equals five and m equals zero and one has a pretty strong um, amplitude. And those again, finite and uh, low end harmonics can lead to enhance uh, inverse uh, n spectrum cascade. All right, the second, um, Physics is helically trapped by electron that can enhance zonal flow dampings. So after the uh, early uh, initial uh, fast dampings, we have a quasi static state of the residues, which would continue to be damped slowly, but we take that as a residues anyway. And we found that the uh, level of that residues would be reduced from uh, adiabatic electron with the, to the kinetic electrons. So this is, um, Similar in the W7X, you have the reductions of uh, residues by the trap electron. And this would not happen in Tokamak. We found Tokamak has very weak dependence on the uh, trap electron for the residue level. And the amplitude of this um, residues with the adiabatic electron seems to be quantitatively close to the axisymmetric um, levels. So that's interesting. Um, so now how do we understand this reductions of residue by the um, trap electron. Uh, we think that what helically trap electron can affect zonal flow is because of the secular drift of those uh, trap electron. 
and <clears throat> because of uh, their radio drip, um, they can respond to zonal flow. And imagine if the drip is so strong, uh, such that the uh, helical trap electrons uh, drip over one zonal flow wave, one wavelength within a uh, zonal flow decoloration time, then the electron response to zonal flow would be adiabatic. And that would be um, different from token math that this response would be zero. So this is purely due to the radio um, secular threat of the helical trap electron. Now, if zonal flow can uh, induce this adiabatic response, the trap electron uh, adiabatic response, remember, appear as a dielectric constant to the zonal flow. So now you increase the dielectric constant of zonal flow and that decrease zonal flow amplitude. Right. So that's uh, opposite to token map that uh, trap electron would not respond. And uh, so electron uh, contributions to zonal flow dielectric constant is zero and that greatly enhanced zonal flow amplitude in token map. That is the basic physics why zonal flow is so important in token map. However, um, in the token map with a strong RMP, if electron orbit can be stochastic, then you can imagine that electron non adiabatic response to zonal flow could increase uh, zonal flow dielectric constants and so reduce zonal flow amplitude. And that could enhance micro turbulence, um, potentially uh, contribute to the uh, so called uh, density pump out in the RMP. All right, so for zonal flow, I would just highlight these two physics. Any questions before I move on to the next? Well, let, me, let me ask a question here. Uh, I mean, is is the are the numbers such that you you revert to adiabatic response for the trapped electrons for all KRs? I mean, I would think a longer wavelength zonal flows might survive. Mm -hmm. um, that's true, right? Because these conditions, so the uh, effect you would expect to be more prominent for the shorter wavelength. Uh, right. Right. Flow. And um, I'm not so sure if those are significant enough. You do see some kind of bigger differences in uh -huh. the uh, reductions of the amplitude by the kinetic electron. Uh -huh. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Okay, if not, let me uh, move on to the last topics. The, uh, uh, effect of neoclassical <clears throat> and bipolar electric field on the micro turbulence. So I would first describe their effect in the uh, stereo and then briefly uh, describe token map with IMP. All right, so neoclassical particle flux in the stereo or the token map with IMP are not intrinsically unbipolar, right? Electron and ion can have different radio flux and that would induce a uh, unbipolar uh, radio electric field. Now the strong electric field, of course, uh, the, the shear uh, could suppress micro turbulence, but in, in the 3D geometry, even the flow itself, the ER itself could suppress turbulence because it come back the um, field lines across the uh, flux surface. And we know that um, some um, field lines would dry the more, some would damp the more. And so if, if you um, come back the plasma across different field lines, then uh, of course you would affect the micro turbulence. Um, on the other hand, the micro turbulence can also easily uh, scatter the uh, helically trapped electrons, particularly like the H10 turbulence, because they are driven by these helically trapped electrons. And those helically trapped electrons uh, dominate the contributions to neoclassical transport, uh, especially in the so called one over mu uh, high temperature regime. So that micro turbulence can very sensitively affect the uh, neoclassical transport. Uh, in the end, we need to couple neoclassical and uh, turbulent transport, but in the Next few slides, I would highlight the uh, simulations that we calculate the unbipolar electric field first, and then use that to um, look at the effect on the uh, micro turbulence. All right, so um, the first thing we want to do is to calculate the um, unbipolar electric field self consistently in neoclassical simulation. And of course, uh, GTC was first developed uh, back at Princeton as neoclassical code. So that's uh, straightforward for us to simulate that. Uh, now for the stereo like W7X, you could have two solutions of neoclassical uh, and bipolar electric field, uh, depend on the temperature ratio. Uh, for higher uh, electron temperature, we typically have electron root. 
uh, for the uh, uh, lower temperature would have the um, <coughs> iron uh, root. So in our simulations, we have both electron and iron uh, species, and then uh, we just perform neoclassical simulations with uh, collision and uh, solve the uh, radio electric field from the uh, quasi neutrality condition. Uh, you can see from the two simulations, one in red for the electron root and a blue for iron root, uh, the uh, electron and iron particle flux as functions of time, initially there's a large difference. And then they set up the ER. And that ER forces the uh, flux to be um, unbipolar and you get to a steady state ER. Now for these two cases, um, we got the uh, iron root ER amplitude is kind of small and flat the electron loop has a larger ER and a, a larger shear. Now, experimentally, this um, has been simulated, uh, realized by ECH uh, plasma in the W7X and calculated by other neoclassical code, uh, shown kind of um, structure similar to what we see in uh, GTC. Uh, this is not a benchmark. We did not have identical uh, equilibrium to uh, compare, but qualitative data seems to agree well. And now, so now we look at the effect of those ER on um, micro turbulence. So we perform two simulations. One is ITG um, with the self-consistent um, ER from the iron root. And we see that the uh, iron heat conductivity does not change much from the blue to red when we include the uh, unbipolar electric field. And they are all still much higher than the neoclassical levels so that uh, ITG dominate the transport in those regimes. On the other hand, for the uh, uh, trap, uh, for the electron root case, the um, heat conductivity decreases drastically when we include the unbipolar electric field, and in some regions uh, that reduced to um, neoclassical level. So this uh, seems to be qualitatively uh, similar to an experiment using the ECRH in W7X where uh, they found that in the uh, middle of the uh, machine, the neoclassical transport account for most of the uh, transport, but away from that, the um, anomalous transport dominate uh, the transport in W7X, okay? Uh, so these calculations uh, have just been published this year by uh, students from PKU. All right, um, similar simulations was done for uh, D3D talking about with IMP. And uh, in these simulations, we um, have uh, the uh, input from G, uh, M3D C1 um, equilibrium for the uh, D3D uh, with the IMP, which show that you have a um, magnetic islands at cubical force surface on the pedestal top. And you produce uh, some uh, stochastic layer in the pedestal. Now, uh, similar calculation has been done by XTC, and I think uh, conclusion are similar to ours in terms of the um, radio edge field produce a change in the uh, pedestal top and their effect on micro turbulence. Now, um, we noticed that in that particular discharge, the iron width is kind of small compared to iron orbit width. Um, so, if we initiate a few iron particles near cubical four surface, uh, that is right at the pedestal top. We see that the trap particle has orbit width um, half way to the uh, separate trace. For badly trapped iron, the orbit actually intercept to the uh, separate trace and the last to the SOL. So um, the perturbations of those uh, islands or the stochastic layer has very small effect on iron. However, the electrons would respond pretty strongly to those uh, structures because electron orbit width is nearly uh, zero compared to the orbit width here. So we first initiated the simulations uh, uh, for the neoclassical calculations to solve their radio edge field. And we found that the, you have a large change of radio edge field due to the uh, imbalance between the electron and ion uh, flux. And um, we use the island size from uh, M3D C1 and calculate the rate of the ER change, uh, which seems to be below the experimental measurement. And so we scan the alpha parameter uh, for the island width. Uh, it does have the range when we double the island width. Now those are from the linear M3D C1 calculation. So 
the island width may or may not be very accurate. But more importantly, what we found is, uh, is that the non-bipolar flux would be strongly affected by the ER itself. And so we use two ER measurements. One is the uh, Elmin uh, phase, another is the Elm suppressed phase. And we found that the <clears throat> um, rate of change of ER is very strong when uh, in the Elmin phase where you have a large ER. When the uh, M is uh, suppressed, the ER near those uh, cuticle four surface becomes small and the effect is much smaller. And so this range between Elmin and M suppressed, uh, the rate of change of ER seems to uh, cap the uh, range of exper experimental value of the change of uh, ER. All right, so this, uh, again, just been published this year in this paper. And now if we look at the effect of this change of ER on the microturbulence simulations, so this is a separate simulation done earlier, um, where we directly use the measure ER um, or model the ER profile. Um, and shown here are the two experiments. One is D3D experiments without the RMP, another two are with the RMP, but one is L mean phase, another is the uh, M suppressed phase. And we look at the um, E cross B shear as functions of the um, radio. And we see that the main difference of M suppressed compared to the L mean or the uh, discharge without RMP is that the E cross B shearing rate is greatly reduced uh, in the pedestal top uh, close to the Q uh, four surface. And that reduction of E cross B shear uh, led to the uh, broader linear eigenmode, which seems to be unstable closer to the core, um, but uh, suppressed um, by the strong ER shear near the uh, pedestal top. The linear eigenmode difference is not that drastic. A more drastic change is in the nonlinear fluctuation intensity. We see that uh, in the M suppressed case, you have a strong turbulent spreadings from linearly unstable locations all the way to the pedestal top uh, close to the uh, pedestal. For comparisons in those um, Elmin phase or without the RMP, the turbulent spreading is uh, stopped by the uh, E cross B shear. So of course, this is consistent with uh, theoretical work uh, by uh, Pet and others. So this led to a enhanced uh, transport near the pedestal uh, top when the uh, uh, E cross B shear uh, is uh, weakens by the uh, neoclassical effect. And so uh, this qualitatively would uh, contribute to the uh, larger transport and the uh, density pump up during the um, uh, suppression. Okay, so that is the um, highlight on the D3D uh, simulation. Any questions about this? I, I have a question about this, this one. So uh, can you, so in, with this kind of diffusivity, so can you uh, match the experiment merit profile during the uh, RMP? I think the chi i is on the uh, experimental level, but D is still at the lower than experimental level. So we do not really uh, have that quantitative level to explain the density pump out. And I think the main reason is because we do not have the separatures. Mm -hmm. uh, the XTC data has a simulation, I think, including the separatures and SOL, I think that they, uh, we're able to uh, uh, explain those uh, particle flux much higher than simulations without the separatures. So, uh, I, I, hmm? so can you uh, distinguish uh, the, because uh, you know the magnetic topology have changed at the pedestal top. So can you distinguish the nucleus contribution or turbulent contribution, which is uh, more uh, dominant? Okay, so in these simulations, as I commented earlier, we separate the neoclassical simulations and the turbulence simulation. So what we have here is purely turbulence uh, flux. Yeah. Uh, we haven't done coupled together neoclassical and turbulence simulations. So what, what we have done here is two step, right? We use the yeah. uh, neoclassical to calculate the ER change and then use that ER variation to look at the effect on turbulence. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the change of turbulence transport uh, appear here, not in the combined neoclassical and the uh, 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 neoclassical and turbulence. Now for the neoclassical transport, um, because of those large orbit width, uh, for the ion transport, you really need to have the geometry across the separatories like you know, uh, did in the XTC simulations. 
uh, here we focus on electrons because the electron orbit width is uh, small. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. This is a clear answer. Yeah, let me ask a question here. Uh, with, the, with the increase in spreading, is there a change in the rho star scaling? Uh, that's a good question. We, for this simulations, we did not really um, study that. This is only one parameter point, right? So I think that would affect the uh, size scalings because of the exactly uh, the the turbulence spreadings uh, set that uh, size scaling, right? Right, exactly. I mean that also I think question for experimental colleagues uh, in this business as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's interesting questions to uh, look into it. All right, any further questions? Okay, if not, let me uh, summarize and next uh, future work in terms of couple simulation. So um, I will highlight three conclusion here. Uh, the first full flux surface simulations with kinetic electrons of the W7X uh, find this uh, interesting new more critically trapped electron mode that could potentially drive particle uh, flux. Um, we found the critically trapped particle has uh, interesting uh, role in the uh, zonal flow. Uh, the linear to load couplings also uh, play some role there. And uh, in general, the unbipolar electric field um, would greatly uh, affect the turbulent transport um, in steratos and the tokamak with IMP. Now, in the future work, uh, we would have two uh, major items. One is couple of neoclassical and turbulent simulations that I'm going to describe in my next uh, slide. Um, and now, um, in collaboration with the Bill um, Heidemann and LHD team uh, in uh, W7X, we are going to simulate the Alpha icon mode and energetic the particle uh, in the uh, steratos. Uh, before I go to the next slide, I think uh, Mike you have questions. I was just going to. Um... I'm just going to, I'm intrigued by your uh, simultaneous simulations of neoclassical and, and turbulent uh, transport. There's an old paper by Harry Minnick where he looked at, um, in, in, you know, simple, simplified models, he looked at this and um, in stellarators and 3D configurations, he found that actually he got essentially the collisionalities um, to, to interact with each other. And if he got basically um, collisional decorrelation. Of, of both the turbulence and also the, the drift orbits from the interactions between the turbulence and the, and the, uh, and the, the neoclassical effects. And I'm just curious if, if you're seeing that. And it, I mean, presumably that's part of what you're seeing in any case, but, but if, you, if you can see characteristics of that, it would be interesting to, to vary the collisionality right. in cases where, where you have both uh, being simulated and see if you see see if you can see the the neoclassical variations um, for instance in, impacting the, the turbulence and also vice versa I think that's a very uh, important uh, physics the uh, coupling between neoclassical and micro turbulence um, the uh, simulation result I show are not coupled yet we simulate the uh, ER first by neoclassical simulation and then we use uh, the ER to simulate mm -hmm. micro turbulence um, but um, as I commented earlier, they are strongly um, interacting with each other. Uh, I highlight the uh, effect of the neoclassical and bipolar field on micro turbulence. Yeah, but as you yeah, pointed yeah. out, the collisions or the uh, turbulence would uh, affect the uh, trap particle, and particularly the critical trap particle that uh, would be important uh, yeah. for steratos, right? The neoclassical transport most of be carried by those critical trap particles. And so can your code do them both simultaneously and have the combined that's, that's, that's my last slide that I'm trying uh, okay, to describe me. here. I don't know if ever this would uh, convince anyone, but this is just how we can do together. Um, yeah. Maybe I go briefly to answer your question. All right, so um, the simulations I discussed, electrostatic simulations are all so-called perturbative or data F simulation model, right? So we separate the... Um, distribution function and the uh, propagator in the um, geokinetic of velocity equations into equilibrium and perturbed quantities. Uh, and you try to uh, find an exact solution for the equilibrium equations, and then you solve the perturbed uh, quantity. So that's a general kind of perturbative method. 
Now for <coughs> um, propagator, the most important quantity is in the electrostatic simulation is uh, electrostatic potential. And we can separate them into three components. You have the uh, neoclassical and bipolar H field. You have uh, micro turbulence and zonal flow. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> uh, those uh, separations would be different for neoclassical and turbulence transport that we have done before. So for the neoclassical simulations, uh, my, you probably recognize this my kind of thesis working uh, at PPL. So we, we, we ignore the uh, uh, guiding center drip in the L zeros propagators. And so this give a F zero exactly local max random solution. Mm -hmm. And then we try to um, calculate the deviations of uh, local max randoms for neoclassical solutions, which is driven by both um, curvature and gradient B drip BD and now with the unbipolar edge field. So this is a neoclassical simulation we carry out for the um, W7X and D3D. More um, common simulation model is this turbulence simulation. And there we put all the neoclassical effect in this propagator uh, of L zeros. And in that L zero, the F zeros is neoclassical solution. However, uh, we don't have simple analytic formula for L F zero for neoclassical solutions, as you know. Mm -hmm. And so all the theory of simulations just approximate that F zeros in the Patuv equations as local max renames. Okay, so you assume that the uh, equilibrium or the satisfied neoclassical solutions, but when you look at the drive of micro turbulence, you approximate that neoclassical solutions as local max random solutions. And so neo, uh, turbulent drive is coming from this um, E cross B drip of um, micro turbulence. So this two formulation has been uh, used in GTC separately. Our next step is to combine them together. Uh, now, conceptually it's quite simple. You just need to um, begin with the neoclassical definitions of L0, F0, and then you combine all the drive together uh, with the uh, neoclassical drive and the uh, turbulence drive. Now, the numerical problem is that neoclassical solutions deviation from local max Williams is typically much bigger than the uh, turbulence solution. So that uh, numerical noise from neoclassical solutions would affect the micro turbulence simulation. So this would um, require a much higher number of particles to resolve this uh, couple of simulations. But I didn't now, um, similar to XTC, we routinely use uh, 10, uh, uh, thousand, uh, thousand to 10,000 particle per set kind of simulations on the uh, GPU. So it's, I think it's doable. And this is uh, mm -hmm. our next steps to do this couple of simulations. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mike. All right, other questions? No, sir? Yeah, very, very interesting talk. Did thank you find any um, systematic differences regarding the periodicity? Because for example, zonal flows, we, we think about the, the most unstable modes and also the, the ones that drive zonal flows in axisymmetric geometry as the really low uh, K parallel modes, right? So that, that are extended essentially toroidally in, in a, a very substantial distance. And here, of course, when you have high periodicity systems, the zonal flows are driven by these local trapping populations, right? So the, the electric field is not a flux function. The potential may still be a flux function. Very different dynamics. So is there any, any kind of general scaling that you could connect to the periodicity of the accelerator field? Um, so in terms of, uh, I think you raised two issues, the numerical issue and physics issue. Now numerical issues, yes, uh, the simulations regularly enforced all the uh, physical periodicity because GTC uh, use a uh, real space coordinate. So we don't, we don't use Bonin representations. So polaroidal angle and polaroidal angle, they're all regularly um, implemented uh, in terms of periodicity. Mm -hmm. right, so there's no uh, issue on that. Now on the physics issue, I think you raised very interesting points and uh, you may um, just, uh, uh, partially solve the uh, puzzle that ITG has stronger zonal flow effect, the STEM has less uh, zonal flow effect. Indeed, uh, if you look at the K parallel, ITG has much smaller K parallel, okay? And <clears throat> the uh, STEM has much right. uh, larger K parallel because they are driven oh, by- Localized, yeah, right. Yeah, um, localized population. Yeah, yeah. And so that may oh. affect the effectiveness of the zonal flow generations. We haven't really studied that carefully, Mm -hmm. um, but I think you raised a very um, relevant point that the larger K parallel in H10 may weaken the J 
generations of the um, zonal flow. Uh, just even just even comparing these two geometries was one more unstable than the other. I mean, it, it may be different for different regimes but, and also different, different collisionalities, but was one more unstable than the other? Yeah, this, this show you that. Um, in terms of linear growth rate, using the same gradients, ITG uh, has slightly larger linear growth rate, but mm -hmm. in the end, the transport level are similar and maybe because Zonophobe play a more dominant role in ITG than S10. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so for the uh, zonal flow effect in S10, why it's weaker, I think you point to a very uh, important mechanism. Another mechanism could be that um, the S10, because the drive and the nonlinear scattering is due to the helical trap electron. So those may violate the, uh, uh, at the uh, known response of, of the uh, trap electrons, like in Togamac case that I emphasize here. So I would imagine that the helical trap electron may respond more to zonal mole than uh, in the ITG case. And so that would, again, uh, increase the zonal for dielectric constants in the STEM case compared to ITG case. Mm -hmm. Because the trap electron is uh, scattered by the STEM and lead to the radio uh, drift. Very interesting, thanks. Yeah, I think there are lots of in, uh, new physics that we have not learned well in this mm -hmm. Let me ask a follow-up there, though. What does isn't this crying out to some to repeat? You know, our old exercise of suppressing artificially the zonal flows, let a turbulent state develop, and then remove the suppression and compare cases of different K parallels. Right. right, that would be a test of that conjecture. Yes, I think that's a good idea to, to delineate these two uh, uh, physics uh, of the ITG versus H10 intensive zonal flow generations. I did not include a time history uh, comparing zone with or without zonal flow, but uh, what you <clears throat> uh, pointed to is, uh, for example, in the ITG simulations, uh, I, I, have, I did not include in my slide, but um, in the early slide, I have a, uh, another case without zonal flow. So ITG will grow to higher amplitude and saturate higher amplitude. And then um, as we did more than 20 years ago now, right? About 20 years ago. So we can freeze the ITG and then uh, see how that zonal flow is generated by ITG. And you can do the same for the s uh, We start with that zonal flow for s And then at some points after nonlinear saturations, we can freeze the s and watch the uh, zonal flow uh, generated and compare this two generations, I think we can address the relative strengths of the zonal flow generations um, pointed out by uh, those side. All right, so that, that take us back 20 years in time, uh, uh, Pat. The good old days. Well, we have plenty of Princetonians here, so, you know. Um, <laughs> Any more questions for Zihang? Uh, uh, Dr. McKee, please. So, hi, Zihang, very interesting. So, in terms of the, at first, when you were showing that the HTEM and the ITG were located in different parts of the surface, uh, the W7X surface, anyway, and um, different parts of the toroidal. Uh, um, different toroidal angles as well. It seemed like they're probably strong, not really interacting much at all. But then when you showed the nonlinear evolution, and it seemed like the HTEM went from this kind of localized structure to almost filling the flux surface somewhat uniformly. Yeah. Or the, yeah. And so I'm wondering, does this also happen toroidally? And then do you get much interaction between these two modes or are they kind of separated? Uh, I guess between the ITG and the HTEM and the, Yes, um, so the turbulence spreading um, occurs in all directions, um, not just the uh, poloidal and radial, but if you look at the um, mole structure along the field lines, I, I used to have it one slide in the uh, earlier talk, but uh, I cut, cut it off. So you would see the mole uh, structures would um, have more activity along the, the field lines. Um, so this is linear eigenmole, non-linearly this would uh, spread along the field line too. 
So totally, so, yes, it also spread. Mm -hmm. So these modes, do they actually non-linearly non-linearly then interact uh, around the now torus this, or like? Uh, I would I would think so. Uh, when we have both uh, in these simulations, we separate them, so we only do the uh, either ITG or uh, uh, STEM simulations, right? We we mm -hmm. we did ITG first, and then we did this STEM. So we have not put them together. I would imagine uh, they could have nonlinear interactions. Um, because of the uh, spreading that they cover uh, all the space. Uh, if you look at the ITG, uh, similarly, you have this nonlinear structures, right? It spread uh, all across the polar angle. So there must be uh, nonlinear uh, overlap and, and possibly interactions. For example, the zonal flow interaction through, through zonal flow or through the scattering of the uh, trap particle. You can imagine ITG can also um, Scatter the helical trap particle, which would affect the edge time. Is that a feasible simulation to do to check that, or is there some numerical reason why it would be very difficult to do that? Numerical, I think, is straightforward. We just need to identify a um, parameter regime that both turbulence has similar strengths, like uh, maybe similar growth rate, so that they can not linearly um, interact. Um, if one turbulence is much stronger than the other, you probably would not see much uh, nonlinear interactions, right? Okay. Yeah, you showed five, like uh, cases with one, like a temperature gradient, no density, and then vice versa. Mm -hmm. But do you, if you have finite gradients in both parameters, do you get to both modes, then presumably bubble away? <laughs> um, uh, we did have one case. Uh, we we uh, um, make eta i close to one and you, we see lower um, uh, transport. But in that case, I think ITG dominate. Uh, heavier is that, uh, correct, right? The eta i one case, ITG seems to dominate. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting, thanks. Uh, heavier online? Okay, looks like heavier uh, quit. Um, okay. Um, another, thing, another thing I do, uh, George, I, I think it uh, also related to earlier comment by um, Xiaobi. It would be interesting to find localized fluctuations to differentiate ITG versus um, uh, S10. Most of the diagnostic in W7X, for example, the um, <clears throat> uh, uh, PCI, they seem to concentrate um, in the uh, outer part, right? That's typically what you would find for ITG in, in Tokamak or CTM in Tokamak. Um, but relatively uh, attention focused on inner side in those weak uh, B field locations. So I wonder if it's possible to have more diagnostic like BES or the uh, uh, PCI or, or CE, CE, CE to, uh, to see any um, signature of such um, helical trap electron mount in the inner part of the machine. But right, still have a stronger intensity in the side than outer side. I I don't know the W7X, but for the IOTD, this is very interesting because uh, so the helical trap particle in IOTD actually uh, only exists more in the edge, you know. So because of the helical ripple is uh, very strong at the right. edge. So I, when you show the nonlinear spreading, I'm just I was thinking, uh, is that in the in the in LTD, if because you, you simulate the WMX case, so if LTD have this one, probably I think that is more localized. It may even not appear in the core because there are no helical trap particle in the core. So it's more like tokamak in uh, tokamak in the core, but uh, with a with a helical particle in the very edge. Right. So we, we, that... have not, we have not simulated the uh, uh, LSD for looking for the S10, um, but looking at the B field variations. The W7X would have much a stronger. Yeah, um, yeah. So that is probably very different from the LTD and W7X because right. the W7X is more like everywhere is uh, have those particles, but the LTD is just the edge. So. Exactly right. It, so it, it, if you if you if this thing do exist in the LTD, because I think in a high beta regime, that region, the edge region in the helical ripple becomes a bad curvature. If that exists in W7X, then it must exist in LTD. And that is, will be same, uh, easier for the experiment uh, to identify because you know that it should be very localized as a specific region. 
which you have the helical trap particle. Well, you can see uh, LHT also have this weak field uh, in the inner yeah. side, but yeah. I don't know, uh, do you know the curvature in this location? Is that uh, pointed away from the machine or toward the machine? That, that's all the bad curvature. Those I, are all bad curvature. So, sorry, I think the output, uh, the, the, the low field side. So, I mean, top mark low field side is a bad curvature. I sent you that paper that, that, that the, the plot the bad curvature region. I see. So, that's similar to the, uh, the W7X. W7X is inner side. It's the inner side, but actually, it's, uh, 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 it's, it's the other side. So. Right. So, in the inner side with the weak B field location, the curvature indeed pointed toward the geometry, uh, pointed away from the geometry center. And so that becomes a bad curvature because it pointed toward the magnetic axis. Yeah. So, Yes, so you, yeah. it basically on the mid plane. So that's the. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, it's more interesting. So you can look I, for those uh, fluctuations there, right? Yeah. yeah. Also there, yeah. We, we, they, they have the very good PCI data in RGD, you know, oh. uh, in the low field side. Yeah, I mean, in that, past that, that region. Yeah, it's a Tanaka sensei mm -hmm. is uh, uh, working on that. So. Okay, great. They I think pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, we are also focusing on the LHT simulation now. Uh, yeah, because RGD the more. Localized should be more localized because you know, as I said, there are no helical trap particle. Other, uh, you know, more inner region, so it's okay. more localized in the edge. And also, I have a question about this uh, toroidal coupling of with the zone That's pretty interesting. I'm I'm just trying to understand what is the physics. So is that because of the orbits is have the different end with the? Uh, I mean, what 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 why is toroidal coupling so different? Uh, in that case, is that the orbit effect? So the because it's of the possibly uh, due to the B field. Yeah, the helical ripple they have the, this N equal five. Yeah, the B field B field uh, has N equal five component. Yeah. So okay. the dominant uh, component in W seven X N equal five uh, and then ten uh, for the LHT is N equal ten. Yeah, it's ten two. So it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pair of the helical ripple. So right. Yeah. So okay. That, okay. That's that, the orbit effect. Yeah, that just uh, induces the uh, uh, coupling between N equals zero and N equals uh, five. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you. This is a really nice talk. Thank you. All right. Any further questions, ladies and gentlemen? I thought um, Kikushi-san had a question, but he seemed to disappear. So can I can I ask some? Oh, you're back. <laughs> Go ahead. No. Oh, interesting talk. But uh, the when 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 the LHD simulation will be available. You, you're, you're working on uh, LHD as well? Yes. Uh, so, so far, the published result is uh, only in this um, ITG simulation. I can uh, send those to you. So for the, for the uh, ITG uh, study, we did, um, we did the LHD uh, linear and nonlinear, and then also look at kinetic effect um, of the ITG in the LHD. Um, but more recently, we are studying the LHD uh, partially in collaborations with uh, Bill Heidman of the fast ion confinement in the LHD. So uh, we focus on uh, two physics. One is the uh, a fast ion transport due to both neoclassical and often eigenmode. Uh, mm -hmm. Another physics is the uh, micro turbulence uh, in the LHD and how they affect the uh, fast ion transport. So uh, those are ongoing uh, study for the LSD. Yeah, but the, the, my, my question is, uh, what, what is the key difference? Uh, key, key difference in why, why the LHD is so bad confinement in, in high temperature regimes and compared with the vendor sign 7X well, uh, what is from your simulation? W7X of course is optimized for your task code transport, right? So you minimize the orbit width um, and, and, and so that, that's very good confinement. The LHD is, or, or I think the uh, kind of um, motivation was for the uh, MHD stabilizations, uh, but that later on, they found a so-called inward shifted configurations that also improved the confinement to uh, near the uh, optimized uh, stereotypes, maybe uh, more expert on the LHD, but no better than me. Sure, but, but, uh, but still the confinement is not good at high temperature. So, so LHD right. has a higher, what, what's called higher effective ripple. Right, yes. But, and, has, uh, and even but, more uh, so. That has, is a, it's a very sim simple explanation. And more deep understanding from yes. the simulation 
could help. The other thing is that the, the effective ripple in LHD increases as beta increases. Mm -hmm. And whereas in 7x, it is actually optimized to be vice versa as beta increases, mm, right. it drops. Yeah, that's that's we all know, but yeah. no further information. But, oh, I mean, uh, the, but uh, from uh, diuretic stimulation of uh, helical trapped particle moles and uh, ITGs, and then yeah, that I don't know. Or that. More, more, more detailed comparison between Bendersine 7x and the LHD might be possible now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So that uh, yeah. I would like to understand the, from the Jarokant uh, person's point of view by the home ring. That's my question. Uh, that much yet for the LST, uh, but now we are we are collaborating with a few of your colleagues at the uh, NIPS on the LST. So they, mm -hmm. they sent us a few uh, equilibrium that we are simulating now. Hopefully mm -hmm. we have more physics inside there. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please. It's pretty early for you. <laughs> well, yeah. no, it's 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 nine o'clock. So okay, good to see you. See you. <clears throat> All right. Any further comments or questions? Um, I saw a chat. Um, uh, one thing is, uh, oh yeah, have you uh, confirmed that the uh, eta one case is still ITG dominate, so we don't have the uh, both ITG and H10 and. Uh, Alessandro, you have some uh, comment about the uh, PCI. You want to explain that? Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, please. So basically, they they have a special filtering uh, techniques that is based on uh, on uh, the the pitch angle of the field. Uh, they can localize based on uh, the pitch angle. Now this has the resolution, uh, which I don't remember off the top of my head, but they can can provide some level of uh, 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 special localization. Uh, it would be good to to ask if if they actually have if, if they actually have any uh, uh, data that is localized uh, and uh, how good that data is. If you want to, I can put you uh, in touch with, um, with the team there. Mm. That, that'd be great. Uh, we have yeah, some discussions with Poker Lab. <clears throat> uh -huh. and, yeah. Uh, 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 a colleague there, um, but we haven't had much um, data to compare with yet. I think it'd be great to uh, find some data to see any signature of the S10. Right. Okay, good. I can ask them. All right, thank you. Um, that's happy uh, to help. Let me know any, uh, any data. Well, going once, twice, three times. Let's thank Zihang again for a very stimulating seminar and good discussion, I think. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Nice talk, Zihang. Thanks. Thank you, Han. All righty. Bye. Thank you, sir. It was very good. Thank you, Pat. Uh, I think this is a very useful um, platform. Um, it it uh, kind of get all the three campus people together, especially during this isolated time. And also, we have we all we now have D three D officially as part of this uh, uh, thing, right? We uh, the the burning plasma group, Doctor McKee and friends. So. Mm -hmm. And there's several interesting talks lined up in the weeks ahead. So watch right. watch your notices. Right. I think I think we should continue when the war is over. Maybe you know maybe not every week, but say two out of four or something. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Since you know. we have a very large concentration of research in the Southern California. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, it would it it would be beneficial, I think, across the board. Yeah. So, um, but by the way, thank you for uh, recommending your students. Um, I um, have not have time to uh, uh, respond in detail to you, but I would uh, need two more postdocs. And hopefully if I can get someone by the end of this year and another uh -huh. one next year. So I think that time-wise is not that uh, strict. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Well, though, I mean, he, that, I mean, there's several possibilities there. So uh, good. 
So yeah, let me know the, the progress. No, he's he he's on trajectory to to graduate in in the early spring. I mean, of course, you're going to have all the fun with the visa and all of this, but and he's he's under the the rules of SWIP, and you know that's quite non-trivial, right? Uh, it's a it's not like PKU, and uh, but uh, you know I think it's possible. So and. Um you also have students, I guess, uh, at, not right now, graduating from US, US, uh, UCSD, right? I got one more graduating from UCSD in the spring, and then okay. one, one from SWIP in the spring. Mm. Uh, yeah, let me know if they, they uh, become um, kind of available. Um, so most of postdocs here, I can see, um, maybe with the exception of uh, uh, Guillaume uh, Borchardt from, from uh, Cadillac. Uh, our friend uh, Xavier uh, sent him here. But um, all of our postdocs we have here, they did not have computational experience before coming to Irvine. So, but they have very good theoretical training. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that's very important. Once they have the good physics uh, background, it's not that difficult to train them in the simulation. Right. Well, I think these two certainly have it, so. Good. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Bye. Bye-bye.